I've um, just been explaining to Michael that during his encounter with you on the train, he was very wrong to offer you advice of a medical nature. After all, your legs have been in my hands now for many years. <laughs> well, I think I know what's best for them. Mike, I, I think you've got something to say to Mrs. Bentinck. Well, yes. Um, Mrs. Bentinck, I should like to apologise for referring to your doctor, that is, my father, as an old twit. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite all right. And? And? And for wrongful advice? Now, just a minute. Maybe I shouldn't have examined her, but I did, and I gave her the right advice. Oh, no, you didn't. Thank you, Mrs. Bentinck. All I said was she could and should have an operation. Oh, no, I shouldn't. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bentinck. This is a matter of medical opinion. It's not for the patient to say. We have been through this. It is not for you to say either. Now, Mrs. Bentinck, we will continue with your treatment. Rest your legs as much as you can, not too much standing, and we'll hear no more about operations, eh? No, Doctor. Good. I'd like the injections. What? <laughs> what injections? Well, the ones where you put glucose in the veins and it all clogs up. Clogs up? <laughs> How much more have you been telling her? I didn't. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't tell me. It was the other doctor. What other doctor? The one in your waiting room. Oh. Oh, no. Doctor, would you mind coming in here for a moment, please? Hello. Just sorting out a couple of magazines to read. Have you been telling Mrs. Bentick about injections? Oh, sorry? Oh, no, that's not the one. Oh, good heavens, it's... Oh, dear. <laughs> Me. That's not the one. No, no, you see, that's the other one on the train. The one that got my cigarettes. Are you a doctor, too? Cigarette? You told me you'd stopped. Oh, yes, I have. Completely. I suppose you told her they were good for her. So, you set up a partnership on the 1010 now, have you? <laughs> and where did you train? Houston? <laughs> oh, uh, Dr. Upton, Mrs. Upton wonders if you'd care to eat. That's the one. That's the one that told me about the injections. Aha! Uh -huh. Come in, Doctor, come in. Join the medical convention. I understand that you took it upon yourself to advise my patient here about injection treatments for veins. Yes, well, I only mentioned that she might... Uh... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't feel bad about it. It seems to be the current rage around here at the moment. You see, she was telling me how much she wanted the operation, so I said, why not ask for the injections instead? Why? Why? Well, why not? I mean, if she has the veins removed, there's always a possibility of recurrence in some of the superficial veins. That's why. The injections are only a temporary solution. Well, that's a matter of professional opinion, surely. And what does our learned friend here feel about it? <laughs> I agree with you. Why? Why not? <laughs> Mrs. Yes. Mike, be quiet, will you? You know, you three really amaze me. Just as a matter of interest, and perhaps one of you might astound me by coming up with the right answer, what is the second thing you do when a patient walks into your surgery? The second thing? The second thing, yes. Uh, well, what's the first thing? <laughs> Ask him his name, of course. <laughs> yes. I was just going to say that. <laughs> yes, well, what is the second thing you do? Uh, Ask him his age. Oh. Ask them what's wrong with them. Oh, no, ask them to sit down. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> well, all right, we give up. What is it? You read her bloody notes. <laughs> of course you read her notes. We knew that. Oh, you knew it, did you? Did you read Mrs. Bentick's notes? Oh, well, how could I? I was on a train. Exactly, you couldn't read them, yet you took it upon yourself to advise her. Now, these are Mrs. Bentick's notes. Read them very carefully and you will find that she has a long history of respiratory trouble from an asthmatic condition she had as a child and an operation of the kind that you suggest might prove fatal on account of the post-operative effects of anaesthetic. Yes, of course. So, Mrs. Bentick, we will... Um, what about the injection, sir? <laughs> Pardon? Well, we know she can't have the operation, but why can't she have the injections? Well, she... No uh... anaesthetic needed. She doesn't even have to be admitted into hospital. Oh, that sounds all right. Oh, yeah. It sounds all right, but the, uh... But uh, you know of a reason why she shouldn't have them. Why, yes, of course I do. It's, uh, because the, um, uh... Because she's on the pill. Eh? <laughs> but she's not. Yes, she is. I am. Are you? Yes, Dr. Hatfield put me on it when you were on holiday. But I didn't know that. Didn't you read his notes? Well, no. <laughs> but he couldn't have read mine otherwise. Otherwise, he'd never have put her on the pill. But what does being on the pill have of to do with course. his Thromboembolism. What? That's yeah. thromboembolism. Exactly. Yeah, he's he's got, got it, it, you see. Corrosion see. substances, you see. Yes, you are. Four doctors all talking about me. Oh, Mrs. 
very special occasion. I think it calls for a cigarette. <laughs> Ah, there you are, Michael. Mm. Others gone for a walk? Yeah. I, um, just had a phone call from Mrs. Bentick. Oh? Oh, she's all right. She told me she was going up to London to get a fifth opinion. <laughs> oh, look, Dad, uh, really, I'm, I'm very sorry about that whole... Ah, uh, can't be helped. Jolly glad you got me out of that pill business, anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You, uh, seem to know your medicine all right, Mike. Well, um, sorry I put you on the carpet like that. No, no, it was my fault. I mean, I should never have spoken to her on the train. Uh, no, no. No, quite understandable. Just qualified, head full of medicine. Funny to think of you being a doctor, Mike. Ah, there they are. Oh, I think I'll go and do some work. Well, perhaps you'll be a surgeon one day, Mike. A famous surgeon. The whole world's going to hear about you. Oh, I've been telling the boys all about you. Yes, 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 all about you. Yes, what, you <laughs> what you did with the rice pudding when you were five. <laughs> what you did in your grandfather's shoes when you were seven. <laughs> tell you all that. Oh, we know enough about you to write a book, and we've only covered you up to the age of 11. Yes, which is <laughs> when the incident in the girls' lavatories occurred. No, no, Dick, you're confusing that with what he did from the top diving board when he was seven. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was going to show you boys some photographs. Oh, yes! Oh, yes. oh no, Mum, not that one. Oh, oh, here's one of Michael going to a fancy dress ball as a fairy. <laughs> Don't bother, Mum. We've got to go. We've got to catch a train. Ah, oh, no, yes, I went. Ah, yeah. Ah, isn't he sweet? Ah, isn't he sweet? Oh, oh, hey. Now I know how prisoners of war felt after escaping. What? Oh, no offence, Mike. Lovely weekend. Oh. Lovely. Well, that photograph always comes out. I mean, no matter who visits us, uncles, aunts, the lady up the road. <laughs> Sorry about the incident with Mrs. Benting, Mike. No, no, that's all right. I mean, uh, it was my fault. Uh, I started it. Oh, no, no, Mike. I mean, I offered to get the cigarettes. <coughs> yeah, well, anyway, I mean... <laughs> you're all right? Oh, yes, I... Uh... I've had trouble with my chest for years. Oh, have you? <coughs> Look, I'm a doctor. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I told you, all you have to do is cough your guts up. I assume we want. <laughs> 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 